While we were gone, I took some time to clean up some of the mess, um, have a little more of my drink, and um, give the red pepper and the cream a little stir occasionally. And I've set a pot of water here to boil. I have not salted that yet, but we will need to salt that before we put the ravioli in there. I'm going to go ahead and put my KitchenAid pasta attachment onto the KitchenAid, and it's done very simply. There we go. And we're going to lock that in. Now we start um, with basically the lowest setting, which is the one setting. And I'm going to take out, I don't know, maybe about a third of this pasta. What I like to do is I've cleaned the counter several times today, so I know that it's clean. I like to just put a little flour on there so that when I do lay my pasta sheets down, they don't stick to the, uh, the granite. All right, let's start with, um, start with a quarter of it. Wrap it up so it doesn't get hard and crusty on top. Press out, or turn it on, turn it on the low. The, lo the lower the setting, the easier it is for us as a, as a cook to handle it. You may need to flour your wheels. Um, so when we did pasta with the girls for um, cooking club night, like I said, there were like 15 of us in this kitchen. And we had a blast. We took pictures, we drank. Um, a cooking club, starting one in your neighborhood, is a great way um, just to get together with people. Again, food is about bringing people together and, and having a great time. You know, before, before there were TVs and computers and running to every sport and activity, people were a little more social. We knew a little more about our kids, I think. So I try to get back, I try to get into that. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. My kids love the computer and my kids love television, but every once in a while we say we have to take a break. So I'm not one of those people that say they don't see it or they don't get it because it doesn't work that way in this house. Whoops, you see, it's getting a little. All right, it's breaking apart now because it's sticking a little bit. So. I think this is ready to pass through and keep going the same direction with, and of course my pasta is going to give me a hard time today when it shouldn't. Alright, let's see what happens. Not coming out good. When you're in your kitchen and this happens, you'll know what to do. Now we've run it through on number two. Now we're going to move to number three. There we go. Look at that beautiful pasta dough. Now we're going to move to number four. I like my pastas to be really thin. And delicate so that 
there is no texture when you bite into it. It's just nice and, and, and just light and airy. Five. So I usually do a six, if not a seven. And that also depends on the dough and how thin, how together it's staying. This one doesn't seem to be staying too together, and I've got really, look, see, I lost the piece. And that's fine. What we do is we just run it through. Let's see. Let's do that separate. Let's run this through one more time. I think this one's only going to take a six. So. And basically, you just repeat this process over with the other pieces of dough. today, but we'll make some more. I'm going to cut this here because out of all of that, I wasn't happy with what I got. So what I'll do is I'll leave this to the side, just round it up, cover it with plastic, and do it again. Simple way to do this. Let's get that, give this another whirl. That wonderful batter out. And what I do is I just take a nice heaping tablespoon and dollop it on. All right, and you need to save room in between each because you want to crimp the ravioli together. Just a little dollop. And this is simple. Look how easy it is, really. And if you had the wonton wrappers, all you'd be doing right now is you wouldn't have gone through this whole process. It makes life really simple. You just lay them out on the counter, a whole bunch at a time, and you dollop the filling on there. And you may have to adjust the filling accordingly. You'll take one wonton wrapper on the bottom. I, what I would usually do is lay several of them out in a row, dollop, 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 and then put the wonton wrappers on top. This may be too much filling for the wonton wrapper, so you'd go down to like a teaspoon worth of filling, but it all works the same way. I've got a little pastry brush here, and I just go along the edge to help the, the ravioli stay closed. Okay. And you know what I do sometimes? I just rub it down the middle. It just makes it stay more in between. Now we're going to pick the dough up and we're just going to stretch it out over the top. Now, I appear to be having a hard time with this dough today. We're going to try another batch right after this. Um, since we have time because the red pepper cream sauce is still cooking away. And of course because I'm such a perfectionist, I'm having a hard time showing you guys today. Oh well. And I'm not going to I have a ravioli cutter. Again, if you're doing the wontons, you do not need these gadgets. You just crimp the edges. You can use a fork to crimp the edges. And basically all this does is just seal the ravioli and give it that pretty look. Like you would see if you bought it in a store. I have a tray already waiting, flour tray, and I just throw them on the tray. What a good thing about this is, if you happen to make a big batch of basic uh, pasta dough, um, you can make the raviolis, you put them in the freezer on a cookie sheet like that. Some people use salmonella flour to uh, help separate them. Put them on a cookie sheet like that, freeze them. When they're frozen, you throw them into a Ziploc bag and save them for another time when you want it. Um, and they're delicious. Absolutely delicious. Okay, this 
one. If you've got a little hole in your pasta at the top, just try and crimp it, because what's going to happen is all the water's going to fall out. I forgot to turn our water on here. Day two not going as well as day one. Okay, I'm going to have to do a couple things before we go ahead and make another batch here. For starters, I'm going to put a little more flour on the counter because they really were sitting to the counter. Okay. This dough seems a little sticky. So I'm going to go and put a little less of the dough this time through the flour on it, see if we can get it to Okay, let's see. Our red pepper is cooking down nicely. It smells lovely, cream and peppers. Oh. Alright, let, let's try this again. Hopefully, it'll all come together. Ooh. Not perfect, but much better. All right. So I think once that water comes up to a boil, I am going to stick these in there. And you can take off more dough, less dough. You can make them smaller. You can make them bigger. Right. You know, these are giant raviolis, but type you would get if you went to a restaurant. I went to a local restaurant last night for my birthday. Um, with some family of ours, my husband's cousin, Augie, and um, his fiance, Teresa, they just got engaged. So we went out to celebrate their engagement and my birthday. Um, local Italian restaurant. Um, I love the food. It's just that when I go there, I feel like I've eaten for four. Um, but we had fun. We laughed. We had a few drinks. We had a meal. We talked. And um, that's what it's all about. 